for Liverpool to pursue their UEFA Cup dream. To achieve that dream, they need to overcome the threat of a team born out of the Olympic ideal. Olympiakos, the champions of Greece. Some people would say that your first two games that you played weren't as convincing as they might have been. Well, if you look at the results in the UEFA Cup, I mean, you don't have a lot of big results, and some big teams have been out by some minor teams. I mean, uh, that was the case for Ajax, that was the case for Juventus, even Chelsea, I would say. So it's a competition you have to be uh, very focused and to make sure you go through. This is what we what we've done. So I'm I'm pleased with the performance. Yeah. Olympiacos have a enormous home record, an awesome home record. Will this dictate your tactics at all? Well, the, the game, obviously, I mean, we, we drew a, a tough team because uh, we drew one of the eight teams that went out of the Champions League first round. I thought they were unlucky not to go through to the, first, uh, to the second round because uh, they played well, they won all their three games at home. Uh, as you said, the home record is terrific, is fantastic, uh, surprising, I would say. And uh, so we know that in the last 15 games that they played in European level, they, they've always been very successful. Will it dictate our team? Probably not. Uh, I think we're away from home. We need to try to sneak a goal. And uh, we know it will be a tough experience for our young team. Most of them haven't played at that sort of a competition, but it will bring them experience and it will, bring, it will be quite a learning process for them. I think we've, we've improved uh, football-wise. We can play a good, good football. Uh, we've got uh, uh, our passing, our movement is better. We create chances practically in every game. Uh, we are the second team in terms of scoring in the league. Uh, what probably lets us a bit down is the fact that at times we do uh, silly mistakes that cost us points. I mean, I would say that uh, even if the position in the league is still uh, a good one, we, we should have improved it uh, had we not uh, done some silly mistakes. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, we're in a, I would say, in a growing process. You know, in, in, in phases of improvement, you, sometimes you have some dips, and you have to accept that. I think the, the team needs, I would say, maturity, and um, it's a new team. Some of them has been, uh, have been here for one year and two, and two months. Some have been here just for two months, so it's just a matter of time now. Olympiacos clearly represent a real danger to Liverpool. Unbeaten in the league this season, notoriously strong at home and with players who know a thing or two about their opponents this evening. In Sweden, we were grown up with English football, and uh, you know the most of play by by seeing them on TV. And I know uh, they're a very famous side. I mean, they've been big transfer some this year, very good players, so they're a quality side. And I think they, the performance getting closer and closer to the performance that Manchester United are doing. Uh, maybe they're not reaching the same level at the moment, but maybe in half a year, one year, they're going to reach it. There's no question that this is going to be a tough game for Liverpool, Alan. Mm, very much so. Up against good opposition. And um, the thing about Liverpool at the minute, you just don't know what to expect. I mean, there's so many times they've gone away from home in the Premiership and they're absolutely cruising. And you think, got to come back with three points. Mm. And then they fall apart. They push the self-destruct button. And the uncertainty is, is, you know, it's a bit disconcerting. Mm. You've played plenty of these matches, both of you. Uh, yeah. Mark, what's the secret? You've got to go out there, quiet in the crowd, the usual old I mean, footballing it's, cliche. It, it, it's the old footballing cliche, but it's absolutely true yeah. because if after half an hour it's, it's gone dead, it means you're doing your job properly. And of course, you know, the, the best way of quieting the crowd, Gary, as we know, mm. is to score a goal. And, and I think that'll be uh, Liverpool's task tonight. We know they've conceded mm. lately and they've been very, very sloppy at the back, but they mm. do always look like scoring. So if you can carry that goal mm. threat away from home, You'll have a chance. But they've done that two or three times this yeah. season. You go mm. Southampton three up, Leeds two up, Tottenham and Sunday one up, and then all of a sudden, you know, one mistake leads to two mistakes, leads to three mistakes, and and especially a good size away from home, you've got to avoid them. Mm.
One of the great positives for Liverpool this season has been the form of, of Heskey, Mark. Yeah. He's I mean, been he's, terrific. He's been outstanding, Gary. And the thing about him, he seems to improve from week to week, match to match. And, you know, I mean, it's a great testimony to him and this was one of his uh, of his three against Derby but we know about his pace and his power but he's added other different facets to his finishing this season and he's, he's really when you consider that you know Fowler and Owen have missed a few games he's, he's been the catalyst for Liverpool going forward I mean that I mean, absolutely unstoppable I think this is a brilliant goal first of all it's physical presence he gets up makes it difficult for the defender and then when it comes back to him sees the keeper off his line good chest down a lot of people finish. thought 12 million was too much for him. But... I think we all did, didn't we, at the time? Um, I mean, th this, was, this was a really kind of get out of jail card for Liverpool um, against Liberets. And, um, you know, I, I, my argument about Heskey would have been he's been proved that much that I've never seen him score a goal like we just saw the second mm. one there before. That's a measure of the confidence. He's going out there at the moment yeah. and he must think, I'm going to score here, I'm going to be brilliant every week. And it's, you, it's great to play alongside. Also, you've got to remember who he's playing alongside. You've got mm -hmm. Owen and Fowler. And if you said to me, who is the most important forward at the minute? It would be neither mm. owner foul, it would be Heskey. Well, he's that good and he's improved that much. Well, if Heskey's the, the positive, there's no real doubt about the negative for Liverpool. It's their defence, which is a bit of a surprise on them because last season, I mean, they're virtually the best defence in the Premiership. Last season, What's excellent. Happened? Individual mistakes, not defending as a unit. On Sunday, I honestly didn't think Tottenham were going to score in a million years mm. and they get two within ten minutes. Liverpool always frowned on people putting their hand up. Trying a bit to like you offside. thought Shearer wouldn't miss the penalty. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> better prediction. But Liverpool always frowned on yeah. people putting their hand up, yeah. trying to play offside. Yeah. They always said, follow the ball till it's dead. Now you watch here the two goals. First, it's a mistake by Honcho. Tries to play it when he should just play percentages. But watch up here in the middle. He runs it, tries to play offside, but puts the hand up. Now, if you put your hand up like that, and then subsequently you look at the the referee or the linesman as he's doing there, you're not watching the ball. I'm not saying he could have got that, but if he takes a step across, then he's in business. It probably wouldn't go in the back of the net. We have Babel here. The ball's got played through. Babel. Hand up. Watch this when it's played over the top. Hand up there. Doesn't turn and follow the ball. Split second delay. And you can bet anything that if one stops, the lot will stop. You'll stop defending. Ten seconds later. It's decent ball in. It's in the back of the net. And Liverpool should have come on with so three you points. Two were never Listen, no. so you two we, were never we, allowed to put your hand we up. We got court martialed no. if you even mm. thought about it. There is a consensus that says if you put your hand up when it's tight, yeah. it'll influence the referee or the linesman. Mm. Right? And that's right. But yeah. certainly, if you put your hand up, you stop playing. And it stops that's the, the most people. important Other thing. people Can react I just to it? ask one more Don't you put your hand put your up. Hand up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see it going now? What they got to do? Well, they've got to defend yeah. better. Like we say, they're always a threat going forward. The mm. first priorities keep a clean sheet if they can do that but if you go 30 minutes in the game and they're well on top you still don't know that you know they're going to get a result there I think that's what we talked about before about the uncertainty and that is the main problem and what the, way, the way goal go is it the way goal I think yeah. Gary is a key and, and there's one thing about them as Alan has said about the negatives about them they do always look like scoring and with the talent they've got in there and you know we talked about Heskey and Owen and those people you always find them to score against anybody yeah. I think it's a big game for the left back Trory Ziga's not playing they say he's got a lot of talent and ability yeah. I've watched him maybe half a dozen times this season he's got it all to do he hasn't started that well and I think this game is a big game for him OK, thanks, gents. Right, Olympiacos versus Liverpool, the first half coming up here on BBC Two. We'll then switch to BBC One for the second half. Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis will stay exactly where they are throughout in the Olympic Stadium in Athens. Yes, Gary, we're in the uh, centrepiece of what will be the centrepiece of the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. The stadium, though, will be much rebuilt by then and will be the... Uh, centre of a complex which will obviously have athletics and also tennis, gymnastics, uh, basketball, swimming and track cycling. They're going to put a new roof on the place. Uh, the facilities, as we look at the crowd, which is uh, about 45,000 here for this match, the uh, facilities are currently being checked by members of the International Olympic Committee and uh, I understand they're quite pleased with uh, what they've seen so far there's been a huge improvement but for the moment this ground remains the home of the 29 times champions of Greece Olympiakos
That's the welcome that they and Liverpool are receiving. It's also a ground, I should tell you, on which uh, Mark Lawrenson once scored a goal back in the midst of time. But then it was against Panathinaikos, who used to share this ground with uh, Olympiakos, but no longer. Ticker tape, welcome. Capacity here is just under 75,000. But it uh, looks maybe just a little over half full. Sammy Hoopia, captaining Liverpool this evening. They, of course, in the change strip. Danny Murphy fit to play, as you see there. Michael Owen at the back of the line. all set for team pictures so uh, let's have a look at the team who consider themselves unlucky to be out of the Champions League defeat in Lyon by the only goal or to be more accurate the reaction to it has cost them a couple of players from tonight's lineup the Brazilian midfielder fielder Elias is suspended for 10 months and uh, the Greek international defender Ansas for four matches following an altercation with the referee. And they have to make a change up front too because uh, of a number of injuries. And the veteran striker, another international, Alexandris, is the player brought in. As for Liverpool, Stefan Ancho pays for his mistake at Tottenham on Sunday. And in all, there are four changes in the lineup. Emil Heskey returning from suspension while Bambi, Gerrard and Carragher are this time in the starting lineup rather than being substitutes. Now West Ham United were once successful on this ground in the Cup Winners' Cup a little while ago, and would you believe it, Trevor Brooking was with the club but not quite old enough to play. Just a baby I was actually there. And I had certainly good atmosphere, although it's only half full, uh, Plenty of flares, home fans jumping up and down. Big old referee, wouldn't want to argue with him. And uh, certainly the, the home side can be a bit temperamental, as uh, Barry's explained, one or two players missing, and as a result of the uh, fracas after their defeat against Lyon. But a difficult task for Liverpool tonight. Referee is from Holland, not only Timmink, and he gets the game out of the way with the home side in the stripes. Liverpool in yellow and black. Unbeaten at the start of the season, Olympiakos, in fact, you can go back 25 matches to find their last uh, defeat in the Greek League. And they've only lost once in 20 matches in Europe and never in the Champions League on their own ground. By contrast, they don't do so well away. There were a few suggestions made that maybe they've had the benefit of a few refereeing decisions during the uh, time of that success. That's a good challenge. Traore. Dug out. Comfortably. By Bambi. Was some talk that maybe Heskey would be the lone figure up front, but the presence of Owen is enough to worry any defence in terms of pace. And the away goal can count so much. I think that was an attempt on goal by the Brazilian Giovanni. Eight of Takis Lemonis's side. He's actually the number two, but the regular coach, Yanis Machiorakis, can only sit in the stand. Unlike uh, his opposite number, Gerard Houllier, that also owes much to the problems in Lyon. Bambi making the run to the middle. Heskey in possession. And uh, not the best of crosses. Well, noisy opening uh, for one of the home fans. Emil Heskey got a big part to play, I'm sure. Certainly been in excellent form. 
really strong physical pre presence running off him, Michael Owen. I think Liverpool do need to, to try and look for the, the away goal, so important in this particular competition. Amanithis playing it forward. Amanithis. Space on the right side. Doing it in a slightly curious style. Oh, Anitis. Andres with the wide ball. Giovanni is down the middle. Here's the uh, Swede, Setterberg. Balls out. Setterberg's appeal. Kupia taking it away from Giovanni. Seemed to think the ball was going to come to him by right. Conti's at the middle of a back three. Alexandris staying up on a Liverpool back line of four. This is he. Tugging going on there. But Jamie Carragher still got the ball away. It's going to be tough for Alexandre. He's uh, playing up, as you say, by himself. They, they fill up the midfield. Then number 20, the Swede. The Setterberg is quite creative. Giovanni, of course, the, the key playmaker. On the left, um, board headed Georgievic is quite a creative left footer. And then looks as if they're trying to get the right sort of wing back. Mavriunithis up against Triori. They've tried a couple of times uh, just to get him towards the byline. Giovanni, incidentally, his place was somewhat in doubt because he was substituted in that match in Lyon and uh, took objection to that, threw his uh, shirt down. Seems to have made it up with the coach who initially dropped him and banned him from the training ground. That's very neatly done by Setterberg of Sweden wasn't in their European Championship squad because he fell out with their coach. It does happen between players and coaches, you may have noticed. Here's the Swede, that means the Yugoslav, Djordjevic. The hairstyle that I recognise from the morning mirror. Giovanni, four million pounds from Barcelona in the summer. Vesterveld hasn't been having the best of times. Went into print on his website about what happened at Tottenham. Two really going for the same ball then for Olympiakos. Nice touch by the Swede again. This is Prostanidis, Giovanni. That's a Joglu trying to get it wide. And should have been successful, but uh, Djordjevic to keep it in play you can see technically a very good first touch uh, plenty of people in midfield so the build-up is very good it's just a case of uh, just in the last third if they're going to get the numbers forward whether it be out wide or the additional support to Alessandri to really put Liverpool under pressure if you look at their results at the Champions League they've all been pretty tight they've won uh, but they're not renowned for too many goals but they keep it fairly tight defensive got a quite a bit of protection in front of the, the back three there, a couple of holding uh, midfield players, so I'm sure they'll be delighted to get a 1-0 victory and take that to Anfield this evening. Match you'll be able to see in two weeks' time, but let's take each game as it comes. 
Got two up at the moment. Lupia. On by Bambi. Sergio Blue. Giving it back again. Traore. Make much use of it though. Thompson objecting. Doesn't sit down too much. So really is number two. Giovanni. Murphy. Carragher. Eski. The referee didn't like the jump on the shoulders, the crowd didn't like the Dutchman's decision. And, uh, Anatolakis is the offender, and Heskey would appear to have landed awkwardly, and uh, the call is for the stretcher. And he got an elbow on the back of the head, actually, it wasn't the landing. It didn't actually look too bad, did it? Must have been just the, the pointy part of the elbow, but that, that's the only contact there was, and although he's down at the moment, I, doesn't seem to be moving that much, uh, but I would have thought he'd be, he'd be fine once he's up and about. Uh, a present Liverpool, just when they get the ball, they're back knock, knocking it a little bit longer, trying to turn the Olympiacos defence around. The totally different styles in the opening period, where Olympiacos, the home side, trying to keep it in tight little passes, and Liverpool locking it. A little bit longer. Let's see if they can make something of this. Although I'm sure Husky's going to come straight back on. He won't be there for the actual free kick, I don't think, which is disappointing. Carrigo and Murphy over the ball. Liverpool have pushed five up onto the edge of the box. You could say that was a disappointment. Thanks, Thanks, Harmon struck in the end. The German. He's returned to the field. Actually, didn't need to be there with a free kick like that. Traore. Owen. Back to the Frenchman again. Heskey. Tip up by Barmby, but more in hope than anticipation. Recluence by Manatitis. Tries again with Heskey. Lucas gave it out. It's by the uh, stadium clock gone. Provided ours has started at the same time as the stadium clock, then it's ten minutes gone. Owen to Bambi. Heskey pulls away. Murphy is forward. Traore. Too many stripes in the end. This making quite a good run and not his first. Just the throw, not the free kick that the crowd want. Set a bag. Katsa Joglu. Kusanidis. Contis. Kusanidis again. Good job he didn't take that in stride. Crow wanted a free kick for that. But you don't get free kicks if one of your players fails to take the ball in the manner they intended. It's neatly done by Gerard. This is Carragher. Murphy forward. This is uh, Haman, and that's offside. Well, they all went up very quickly in unison, and... Uh... There was three Liverpool players quite a few yards off. But a little bit better build-up, I must say, when I saw the line-up, I was a bit surprised Gary McAllister, his experience wasn't there, because they do need to, to keep the ball on occasions, and so I think they've just given it away a little bit too quickly, Liverpool were present. That was about the first move that they had built up uh, a little bit more patiently. Georgievich. 
but the jogging. Ahmad, Ahmad to be more accurate. Carrigan, Gerard. That's for Bamba. He has to come back. Well, a conservative estimate, 20 yards. Joglu. First time that Djordjevic has come in from the touchline. That's a Joglu gets through as a result of a misunderstanding. Shot from Alexandris, but no real test. For Westerveld pretty obvious what he was going to do and he got no power behind it yeah it's just threaded a ball through didn't he Georgievich came inside you could see what he was trying to do and he scuffed it a bit there wasn't any of the sort of power that they needed but at least it was what we call a shot on target about to now they've, they've sort of I think been a bit predictable and labored with their build-up now they've got to do it a little bit more pace where the crowds encourage them to do so now Georgievich Set a bag, offside against uh, Alexandris. Good save anyway by Vesterval, who was just forward of his uh, six-yard line. Alexandris, his seventh season. And uh, his position offside there, absolutely clear. He's 32 years old now. Said that he wants to play in the Premiership. Well, left it a bit late, but somebody might fancy him. He probably heard the money going there at the moment. Uh, quite impressed with Setterberg, he's quite looks quite uh, inventive. Uh, Sweden would have could have done a bit with that vision, I think, uh, yeah, last summer, but still. And personality clash. It's a good challenge for Murphy, who oh, surely <laughs> pushed his man out of the way quite clearly. Only Murphy who was uh, injured at Tottenham, and it looked as though he wouldn't be fit for this. Here's the push of the night, just a little nudge there, and uh, away goes Anatolakis. It helps set up Robbie Fowler's goal at uh, White Hart Lane. He's playing on the right side of midfield, I think, personally, if he had a choice, he preferred to play in the centre, but <laughs> haven't got that natural width. They miss Berger on this left-hand side. Mickey Barnby, of course, can, can play out wide, although he's more naturally right-footed, but uh, Schmitz are on the bench, and Murphy getting the nod on the right. This is Giovanni. That's Good cover by Carragher. Bambi. The best of play by the England player. Seemed to get caught slightly in two minds as to whether he was going to go on or play it through. The last observation, Trevor, prompts the question, do you know of a midfield player who doesn't want to play in the middle of midfield? Well, you're always worried stuck out wide whether you're going to get involved in the game, and, but then you tend to drift in, but of course then you, you sort of on either side the width that you need particularly to help them keep possession I understand the theory but not too many seem to want to play wide but to Joglu oh he was caught then by Traore and uh, slight improvement in the pace of the Olympiakos attacks possibly didn't need the, uh, the tumble over but he was definitely caught. And Djordjevic is quite capable of hitting from this range with the left foot. Not too subtle a challenge, was it, by Troy? Liverpool mustn't dive in. They did so with Giovanni in his little dribble beforehand. And on that occasion, well, you've just got to stand on your feet and let them commit you. Five in attacking positions. Well, the Greek champions, but I think that Djordjevic will have a crack here. Greatest. It was a touch better in that it did reach the goal, but too high. It looks to be quite happy to 
use either foot, uh, just rebounded quite nicely. Certainly Djordjevic didn't get the height to clear the wall. And then he just got under it, the Swede, and Vestavel not troubled. So no early dramas. And uh, apart from just one scuffed shot of Alessandris, uh, Liverpool coping quite comfortably. We've said that before this season. Good climb by Contis. Hupia. Well, his goalkeeper suggested that maybe more clearances are needed like that, but rather nearer to the goal. Of course, sometimes want to play too much football in their own box, seemed to be the theory of Vestavel. Giovanni. <laughs> Arrogant but skillful little flick. And that's well found to Mavrinitis. Flag was up for offside against Giovanni, which was surprising. Not when the ball was kicked, I think, was a general opinion there. But, yes, just half a yard, wasn't he? So, let's give the linesman credit. I think, also, just Chirori, I noticed it at Wyatt Lane last weekend, he, he tends to get sucked in towards the centre. And we've already seen at every opportunity, they, they'd certainly want to get it out to the number 40 in the right wing-back, Mavrionethis, and, you know, you mustn't give him 10, 20 yards as an outlet. On by Heskey. Bambi just couldn't take it. Hupia. Good decision by Yeog. I'll try again. Amanatithis. The trouble with Greek words is they all seem to have one syllable too many. It's sometimes a mistake to look at a name. Hupia. Heski. Using his physique to good purpose. Harmon, Murphy, it was intended for Heskey. Back to Joglu. Borsanethis. Onside this time, Giovanni. And of course, that time he couldn't take it. Score of three of their goals in the uh, Champions League campaign. Gives a thumbs up to the pass. Must wish he'd have taken it on his instep, which he probably would do nine times out of ten. They should have done. Uh, for somebody of his ability, that was a fairly comfortable ball to take in your stride. You've got to ask the question how he got behind a, a very flat Liverpool back four, and it was Babel who went to sleep, who uh, got caught out. again from deep. Setterberg is forward down the left, Djordjevic in possession. <laughs> Almost from Brazilian to Swede. Keep my Harman. Djordjevic again. Giovanni. Djordjevic. A lot of space out there. Early cross, that's a go kick. Crowd think it's a corner, but it's not. I think he thinks so as well. I, I just thought with his left foot, that was a pretty poor cross. And I assumed it must have come off the defender, because he has certainly, as I say, got probably as good a left foot as they've got in their team. Let's see. Yeah, well, it wasn't that bad a cross, was it? It wasn't even the slight contact. and. No wonder he's upset. Mm, referee and linesman concurring. The referee and his assistant concurring. Liverpool free kick. Just past the... Uh, just short of the halfway point of the second half. And the referee laying down the law. 
Oh, Gerard Houllier said he wanted a strong referee. He seems to have got what he wanted. Murphy to take the free kick, and in case I'm confusing you, we are past the halfway point now in the first half. Flag is up for offside. Well, Liverpool have already seen two or three occasions that they do move up very quickly just as they're about to thread balls through, so the, the forward players have got to be conscious of that. They mustn't waste a free kick by getting caught out there like that offside. Set a bag. Alexandris. And I think this will be the first booking. And it will be against Traore. I think Mavrianithas had got past him, whether he thought he'd knocked the ball too far, but Troy is diving in, as I say, he got sucked in again, and if he's out there already, then they, they've not got the option to pass it out as, as readily, because they, he's given him five, ten yards at least to get the ball. Sutterberg to take the free kick. Giovanni in a group of four, in the line with the far post. Mavrianithas down to the right. That's Vestervelds, and he does well. That's a Joglu. And Traore caught in two minds. And Mahambi back trying to win the ball on the edge of his box. Giovanni. Well claimed. Sort of save the Vestervelds should make, but... Uh, one of those headers, quite a long way out from the edge of the penalty area. When it bounces just in front of you, you can just take your eye off or get an awkward bounce. And so Vesterveld did well. First of all, on that save, certainly with the previous punch. This is it coming away from goal. Look, it's near the edge of the penalty area, so it's quite a long way out. And just bounced correctly, didn't it? Didn't shoot through, which would have been the worry from Vesterveld's point of view. That's a juggler with the challenge on Bambi. We looked at that replay. Uh, Liverpool were again caught offside on an attack. That nullifies the pace if they're not going to be aware of that. So far, it's been very easy for the back players to move up either on the set piece or in open play. Traore. Meski was hoping someone was coming from wider, but Murphy was not there. The shape of the Liverpool side at the moment just means that they're tending to the back lads to, to knock everything sort of 50 or 60 yards through. That if they don't hit the chest of Heskey, then they're in trouble. And, and Michael Owen's not going to be able to turn them around with his pace with, with that sort of length of pass. And at the moment, you'd just like to see him get a little bit more composure, build up from the back. I'm sure <laughs> two lads in the studio know that's really what Liverpool's game has always been built on. And, and in this situation now, this is where they should knock it much neater but look within five seconds they've given it back to the opposition Set the back. Georgievich six involved in this attack Liverpool pulling all back by Heskey and nothing comes from the attack They've only got one up, Alexandris, and, and Djordjevic, good left foot, he tends to sit only once when he had that claim that he should have had the corner kick. And so if he's just sitting in there, I'd like to see Jamie Carragher as the right back just push up because he's not marking anyone, so he might as well just move on 20 yards. And again, then Djordjevic can't get it to feet because he seems, if he gets under pressure, he's not got that amount of pace. Uh, so at present, Liverpool, although they're coping comfortably enough, they could make things easier. Kostinitis. Giovanni. Rather easily bundled off the ball by Heskey. Oh, Michael Owen flattened but shoulder. A little pensive, Monsieur Ullier. Stop, stop. 
Setter bag. Plenty of room to turn and go in from a central position into a crowd of four. One of whom finally denied him. Heskey. Armand Gerard Bambi. Traore. Rupia. Little spell of uh, keeping possession until then. And that really was quite unnecessary. They do those things, they've got to be well done. Djordjevic. Carragher having to recover his ground a little bit. Giovanni at the back of the box. Alexander is just ahead of him. Avrothanisis makes him making it three on the edge of the box. Gerard's head. Forsanithis has uh, given this free kick. On 32 caps for his country, Forsanithis. One or two in the Olympiacos squad who might well be involved when England come here in June. Avrothanisis. Joglu, Traore. <laughs> Liverpool substitutes incidentally include Steve Staunton, who's been pulled back from uh, a loan spell at Crystal Palace. Number of the the bag. Usual form, six to eleven, and back again. Also need this. Harmon getting in the way. Carragher's jump. Harmon again. Bambi. Nobody close to. No Harmon offers. Heskey took it well on his chest. And not a bad strike by young Gerard. Free kick against Murphy. And the referee wants a conversation with him. And he reaches to his pocket and shows the yellow card. Silly one, wasn't it? Really unnecessary. I think just deliberate handball, he's got to show it to. His second of the UEFA competition for the punch of the ball. Three yellow cards for a suspension. Because the second in this one match would uh, lead to red. Trouble with things like that, a silly moment, and then later a tackle that needs to be won that you don't get timing. You don't get the timing absolutely right, and suddenly it teams down to ten men. Seeing a lot of the ball, diving around a little bit too. Was a push, the ball was moving on the free kick. Amanatitis wants to take it. That's a your glue. Who gets possession? Hupia. Setterberg. Alexandri's trying to find a bit of room in the middle. Liverpool hold the line well. And uh, just push up in unison, clear offside. Yeah, just coming in so look, he's trying to backpedal, but they've held the 18 yard box well. Sederberg, though, looks you know, as if he's very aware, picks things out very quickly. Two or three balls like that, they're straighted through, but on each occasion, Liverpool, as you said, held the line well. Babel looking a little bit happier in the centre of defence than he did playing right back at, at White Hart Lane on Sunday, but of course, Honcho's had to go out as a result of that. At 
Westerberg came from Anderlecht in the summer. That's why I voted the uh, Football of the Year in Belgium. Referee not impressed with that fall by Alexandris. Matitis turning up on the left side. Takes his time, finds his space, the sweet. Right to away. Portanitis wanted to go backwards then, and neither were the crowd. Chance of a counter here if they play it right, Liverpool. It's encouraging there because a bit of frustration creeping in from the home fans. I think they're just too deliberate, too patient. Look, this is, you know, they've got about four or five passes in their own half, and by now, Liverpool nicely constructed, everyone back, and they're going to have to take something special or, or an error of judgment, lack of concentration, I think, to, to allow Olympiacos through then. Curious, because there was a time when Liverpool were criticised for doing exactly that. But I think you, you, you've got to have an extra gear to step into, and at the moment, Olympiacos have been a bit frustrating that they haven't had that extra gear. Although, if you're a Liverpool fan, you're quite encouraged, hey! I should think. Go, go! Go, go! That's go, go! another question of one match, one match as it is in uh, the Champions League. Tie over two legs. Not to concede away from home. Preferably get an away goal. It's still the start of that competition. which uh, on occasion keeps the match alive for a little longer. Still waiting for the first corner, incidentally. Have a free kick on Liverpool. Yeog Anatolakis, a feeling it wasn't his fault. There's another elbow come forearm in the top of uh, Heskey's head. Stephen Gerrard and Bambi offside. That must be annoying for Julio would have thought because what's that four or five now when they've got into you know, partial threatening position and when the ball's come in and play's gone up very early and you know, the Liverpool players should be able to look along the line and have a look at that and I've, I've learned now that that is a specific tactic of the home team and make sure they don't get, keep getting caught like that. Traore really does have to let the uh, blood rush to his head with his challenges. It was another very untidy challenge that brings the free kick, and we've got uh, more of a complaint to the referee. back in uh, great numbers. Oh, now uh, Heskey on the wrong side of the ball. Hello, hello. Hello, no, no. Free kick. Hey. A lot of scrappy stoppages though with free kicks because they're so slow building up Olympia because they little got so many numbers back when they try and thread it through with their little triangle five yard passes there are too many being able to get tackles in and that's why the game not being able to flow at all three forward on by Alexandris offside flag it won't count Good nod on, but he moved just too soon, Alexandris. If you watch him in the centre of the picture, only two people in the 18-yard box, just probably half a yard, but did Babel know that? Was he the wrong side? Vesterville certainly wouldn't get there, but of course the ball, the ball did miss the goal, but considering there was only two people in the 18-yard box, that was a bit more anxious than it should have been. 
can't help but wonder what uh, Arsho is thinking about the performance of the German Babel so far. He likes to hold the line. He's, he is happier in the centre. I, th I think right back he does struggle as he did a while hard late, but uh, he does like to hold the line. And yeah, at, at the moment, just there have been a couple of marginal decisions. It just needs that one lapse. And of course, I'm sure at the moment, the way the game's going, Olympiacos are looking for a 1 0 this evening. On by Heskey, and that's beautifully put in by Nicky Bambi. So simple. Well, they're not going to get a 1 0. Liverpool might get a 1 0, and they've got an away goal. The Greeks went to sleep, and Bambi from the nod by Heskey, from the throw in by Carragher. As simple a goal as you could wish to see. Defenders there, but none of them were defending. Timed his run perfectly. Emil Heskey didn't get an elbow on the back of his head this time. And there, Nicky Barnby getting in front of his man. With almost a stunned silence. Not happy fans just to our left here. And now let's see how they react because their side have been very laboured in their build-up. And it's going to be very difficult, vital away goal for Liverpool and now can they step up again because they need to otherwise I can just sense the crowd will, will certainly start putting them under severe pressure Lamont, chase for Heskey and Peropoulos and the great goal has been a virtual spectator that's the one who's been beat Djordjevic. Goal in the 38th minute. Liverpool having twice won away in this competition already. Haven't played so well at home. Good boost to the confidence, that's for sure. Well, the goalkeeper is highly rated, Ella Ferropoulos, that hasn't really had a chance with that because it's just nodded on, he can't come in that area. And superbly taken by Nick Barnby, they've just got in front of his marker and you just see the elation there. Free kick right on the edge of the box. It'll be more reason for the Liverpool bench to stand up in unison. Harmon, who was fouled. seemingly saying wait for my whistle because he's pulling the wall back a long way Dimitris Eleferopoulos may well be in goal for Greece against England we shall see either Murphy direct or just touching it to Harman we'll have to wait and see well, we know what Harman can do to England's cost a conversation between the two two Liverpool men the edge of the wall and Murphy goes for that gap that's a good save did well Eliferopoulos but Murphy knocking it outside the wall in fact the side the goalkeeper Eliferopoulos was standing the side he should be making the save but he made the save and he knocked it wide as well so there was no follow up opportunity for Liverpool Not sure at what point that free kick was properly taken. Amaranitis. Amanatitis. Sit a deal of complaint around us. From the supporters of Olympiakos. Esky back, somewhat unorthodox but effective. Gerard tries to get Bambi away. Aminatitis come to be covering. Aminatolakis. It is a bit predictable, the pattern, has to be said. Hufia. From Olympiakos, that is. Heskey. Bambi. Bambi 
Bradley, incidentally, keeping up an interesting record. He scored in every round so far, and on each occasion in the away leg. Leperopoulos seemingly uh, stumbled a little bit then. Perhaps he wasn't comfortable with the other foot and wanted to make sure it was his right. I think that's the one. Just waiting for it to try and get it on his right foot. Then he got pressurised and, and had to scuff it with the right foot into touch, and that added to the frustration of the home fans. Djordjevic. Alexandris. Now, wanted to go inside Hupia instead of going on. And it cost him everything. I think he showed his 32 years of age. That, that won't get him his move to the Premiership because it actually ran very kindly. He got a little ricochet that wrong-footed the two Liverpool defenders. And he had any pace, he'd have got away from him. There would have been no need to come inside. So that's another encouraging factor, you know, I think, from Liverpool when you look at the defences. So they're not going to hurt them with pace at the moment. Certainly not those players on the pitch. According to the uh, scoreboard here, the goal has been scored by Barbie. But it's for Liverpool. Amanatitis. <laughs> That's a Joglu. Offside. Alexandris, fairness to Olympiakos there, without a number of strikers available to them. Again, the assistant referee absolutely right. The Uruguayan Alves is injured. Oforike of Ghana also, and the Greek Koutos. First time that Gerard Houli has got on his feet, except to applaud the goal. minutes of stoppage time to be played coming to the end of the uh, 45th minute Mark Lenithis leaves it to uh, Satterberg Contis Savani moves away from Babel Babel lets him go Andres now isolated down the middle. Armin. Stake by uh, Murphy. Setteberg. Borsenitis. Rolled away, really, by Hupia. Harmon. Should have done better with that. It's coming straight back. That's a Joglu. Djordjevic. Crowd not impressed. They're, they're very laboured. I, I, I was expecting much more. When you think of the record that they've got at home, you think they'd sort of really be putting Liverpool under pressure, but Liverpool... They've been workmanlike, uh, you know, solid performance, but you can't say they've been anything special, but they've got a goal, a vital away goal, and, and they've had really not to be anything other than that because uh, they've been so disappointed, I think, Olympiacos. Djordjevic has really created little or nothing, and the couple of opportunities he's had, he's given it away. The ball now given away to Michael Owen to have a run. Takes on Contis. Uses the arm a little bit. But gains possession. Let's go kick. Didn't quite explode into his pace there, Michael Owen. I just thought that was given the ball. Perhaps just two defenders left. One could have been well exposed if he'd have had that just that little acceleration that had a year or two ago. I think he's still conscious that he, he doesn't want to explode into top gear and... Uh, that was a shame, but the whistle goes, a good 45 minutes. Uh, you're going to 
hear the reaction in the home fans. I can fully understand it because they've been very laboured in their build-up, almost at times as if they've been disinterested. And whether it's out of the Champions League, but considering they've been a side that have you know, been unbeaten here, Gio Giovanni there showing his descent, and they've got to find something in the second half that we haven't seen up to now. Well, you could hardly describe it as a great match, but it's going pretty well for Liverpool at half-time. Olympiacos nil, Liverpool won. The scorer, Nicky Bambi, in the 38th minute. Well, it might not have been that entertaining mm. for 35 minutes, but it's job done for Liverpool, isn't it? Well, it wasn't, so a, great, it wasn't a great spectacle, but great performance mm. as far as the scoreline is concerned by Liverpool. Solid, re resolute. I think they've pressured the ball well. Heskey up front mm -hmm. has pressured the ball. He ran after the goalkeeper there, mm -hmm. 30, 40 yards. And that basically sets the tone. And as I say at the top of the program, if they can remain solid, they've always got a chance, as we, mm -hmm. we've seen in the first 35 minutes. Never looked like scoring, then ball into the box and Bambi's on the end of it and, and they've got the goal. And they've got to be solid and resolute yeah. in the second half. That's the most important point. It was, it, was, well, say, it was important that they, they, were, they got to be together when we, you know, we talked at the top of the programme about them conceding goals um, you know, in the Premier League. And when you go and play away in Europe, and we said that the most important thing is that everybody's got to be together. And Alan said Heskey mm. basic was a first point of defence. I mean, a lot of the time Owen's even playing behind him and he's the next one. I think once Heskey goes and everybody goes, everybody starts mm. to close down, shut the space down. And they've actually done it really, really well. It's not a great spectacle, no. but in terms of Liverpool looking at that 1-0 up at half, time in the away leg is, is an excellent performance well, so good, far. A good game for Liverpool means no spectacle really. Yeah that's it? right yeah. but to be fair they haven't had to do yeah. a lot. Olympiacos have been very very disappointing. Yeah, they're neat, they're neat and tidy in the build up but yeah. never really posed a threat. Yeah. They all seem to want to have very, a touch don't very they? comfortable. Yeah. And they've got that you know priceless away. Oh well, that means a lot doesn't it yeah. and really it's you know it comes from a throw and I think Heskey is absolutely magnificent again and you know, it's a physical presence, the ball's up in the air, he goes and wins it, flicks it on, Barnby takes a chance, and I think it's a terrific finish. He takes it in the volley and gives the keeper no chance. I just think it's one of those things for a midfield player that you, you come into the box very, very late so the defender doesn't see you. Most of the time you never even get anywhere near the ball, but just time is run superbly and just the sheer strength of Heskey at the flick on. And Perfect for Barnby. I tell you what, it's, it's a super, super finish because the guy was climbing all over him. See, Liverpool have missed this for years. You need somebody big in there with a physical presence. And you know yourself, you're defending against it. It's very, very difficult. And, mm. and he's coming on, he's going from strength to strength. And he just gives them, he gives them pace, but he gives them that physical presence yeah. in there, as we saw there. Mm. Another option for them, isn't it? Yeah. It was practically Liverpool's first chance in the game. The next one came pretty quickly after a, a Murphy free kick. Yeah, from I think the foul on uh, Haman, wasn't it? And mm -hmm. I think when we see it taken, that uh, the massive numbers in the wall. Liverpool trying the old Manchester United trick, tack a couple on the end and, and play it round it. And, and I think certainly the thing about Murphy, you weren't quite sure whether it was going to be. Wasn't Murphy. it an early free kick, was it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually didn't even take, take it, it, you know. <laughs> take it. But, but said, who was it that followed I think that's what, they, in. that's what they call a dead ball. <laughs> 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 but it, it was, I mean, certainly it, it became a half ah. chance. And a, he, went, he does take it, folks, believe me. <laughs> <it, laughs> yeah, he does it. take it. And um, I think he was trying to just catch the goalkeeper by oh. unawares. And we're not quite Barnby's sure. I think, it, there again. I think it's I think Barnby. Barnby takes a chance. Mm. That's what yeah. Barnby's good at. He looks along the line and just makes his move and he's in. Yeah. And a little bit of break there, they could have been two up. Yeah. And Olympiacos haven't threatened at all, but probably had one chance, Alexandris had one. Well, it was a sort of half chance, wasn't it? Mm. it was really a great chance. And if you've been struggling defensively, you want to play against something like this where they're never really threatened. It comes to some right-hand side. I think that's a comfortable save, really. And if that's the best they can do in the first half, then you're always going to be in yeah. business. And the, th and the thing was, and as we, as we were talking about Liverpool being behind the ball, Gary, it, it, I think Hupier and, and Gerrard had actually tried to come out and win the ball, and yeah. that really created the half chance. But I mean, yeah. he could have thrown, if, his, thrown his cap on it, best of all. If you're a Liverpool defender playing the first 45 minutes, it's dream time. Yeah. Well, we must remember, of course, that Olympia, because I mean, one in the last 20 games they've lost at home, and that was against Juventus in the UEFA Cup last season, so they're not in mugs, are they? Well, no, get the, I think we'll see a different uh, Olympiacos in the second half. I think there's no doubt about that. They'll start to push men forward, and um, they have to do. But I just, I just feel the thing is that they're at home, they're almost preening. It's like, let's mm. all have a little touch, let's show what good players we are. And, and really, they've just passed it in front of Liverpool, and it's, it's bread and jam for Liverpool. Liverpool have done it for 45 minutes, they've got to do it for 90.
OK, right, that's it from us on BBC Two. We'll see if Liverpool can hold on on BBC One. So join us there for the second half in just a moment. If you've missed the first half of Olympiacos versus Liverpool on BBC Two, you've probably been watching EastEnders. If you were, don't tell me what happened. I've got it on video. And luckily for you, we've videoed our first half highlights. That's a job you get through as a result of a misunderstanding. Shot from Alexandris, but no real test. Westerveld. That's a Joglu. And Traore caught in two minds. And Bambi back trying to win the ball on the edge of his box. Giovanni. Well claimed. On by Heskey, and that's beautifully put in by Nicky Bambi. From the throw in by Carragher, as simple a goal as you could wish to see. Defenders there, but none of them were defending. Two Liverpool men on the edge of the wall, and Murphy goes for that gap, that's a good save. Did well, Eliphoropoulos. So, Olympiacos nil, Liverpool won. Great first half result for Liverpool. Not a scoreline we wanted. Mm. I don't think it was a great match entertainment wise. I don't think Liverpool were fantastic as an attacking force, but they defended well. They put pressure on the ball at the right time. Olympiacos really didn't have many chances. And Liverpool got the all important goal, and it was a decent goal. Good play by Heskey, who has been excellent again. Let's have a look at that goal. Comes from a throw in, ball up in the air. He's big and strong. Liverpool have missed this for years. Physical presence in the box. Barbie takes a chance, gets on the end of it, and I think that's a brilliant volley. You've just got to gamble as a midfield player, which is exactly what Barbie does. He, he hadn't had a, a sniff of a chance in the first half, and he's gone on and just got himself on the right side of the defender. The defender was caught very, very square, flat footed. But because he went early, Barbie, and because the ball was right, and the finish was exemplary. I mean, it's a difficult chance that we took to the race with Perth. Basically, just gives them options. Mm. You can play on defeat or up in the air. And it's come from a simple throw in. The ball's in the back of the net. 1 0 up. 45 minutes to go. Don't push the self destruct button. Plan just A keeps, is working. Yeah, just <laughs> most keeps, definitely. Just as long as you don't solid, have to resort to plan solid, B. Solid, resolute. Olympiacos haven't showed a lot. They're neat and tidy in the build up, but they really haven't threatened. Same again in the second half. Mm, I can tell you at home, if you are watching EastEnders in that first half, you've just seen everything that happened. Uh, <laughs> it, the was, lot. it was it fairly was the awful, lot. but it's now set up for a decent second half. You know. Yeah, you would have think that uh, you would have thought that Olympiacos will come out and they've got to attack, mm. and the crowd. They'll oh, dictate to Olympiacos to come forward. They have to. Yeah. They? Yeah. And they are, to. I mean, they've got a fantastic home record. They've won all three Champions League games there this season. A win against. But not Valencia. that performance. No, it's surprising, no, 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 isn't no. it? Anybody can have a bad night, but. As I said, if you're a Liverpool defender playing against that, mm. you know, you'd be very, very comfortable. Mm. You just want, you just, I just wonder whether the fact that they've come out of the Champions League and they do feel aggrieved that they should still have been in it uh, after what happened in Lyon. And I think they're playing like that. They're playing like, we shouldn't really be here. Mm. And, and because of that, Liverpool are in front. But they have to change. They, you know, they are at home, as we know, but they have to change in the second half. And I think they'll start to push men forward. We don't want to say too much because we might upset them. And they'll come up firing in the second half and, and nail about four. <laughs> so, I mean, again, you look at the first 15 minutes of the second half, if Liverpool, they can just defend as they've been defending, then it should be all right. 
the last thing you want is, you know, 47, 49, 51 minutes, like Olympiacos getting chances and then eventually mm. scoring. Mm. But that's a problem for, for Liverpool and Julio because they've been in this situation yeah. a number of times already this season, mm. you know, and he's come, in, come out at half time and thought, oh, we're all right today, and bang, and they've conceded goals. So it's yeah. it, the fear of the unknown, really. Well, Never in doubt. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a confident. <laughs> well, let's see if they can hang on. Let's rejoin Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis. Yes, Gary, I don't think there will be too much doubt about the conversations going on in the Liverpool dressing room at half-time. Gerard Houllier has uh, been making the point about where Liverpool would be in the, in the uh, Premiership. I think 11 out of 14 uh, league games, Trevor, they've led uh, and they haven't been able to hang on to advantages. Well, the defence was so strong last season. Uh, this season I think it's in the Premiership they've just got the one win that was at Derby County a comfortable win in seven away games yet in Europe they've done well away and so it's strange it's just that concentration of the lapse of a soft goal There's certainly the crowd here were totally deflated at the half-time whistle but it wouldn't take much to get the flares going again and them jumping up and down and it's very important you know, for Liverpool to keep that concentration can they rediscover that consistency at the back that they showed uh, for a lot of last season. They were the best defensive record in the Premiership and you know, there's not that many different players so uh, it's just a case of, of perhaps getting one or two decent away results and this would be a good one although I think like the lads of the studio Olympiacos surely must come up with some some more sort of you know, quicker attacks. It was so laboured at the back by the time they actually crossed the halfway line Liverpool always had 10 goal side. Well, the coach Yanis Matsurakis of uh, Olympiakos, who took over in the uh, in the spring from the former uh, Italian player uh, Alberto Bigon. Uh, it must be pretty uncomfortable for him. I mean, this is a club that had ten different coaches during the 90s. They've fallen out of the Champions League for all the fact that they're unbeaten in the Greek Championship. Uh, and he can do very little about it. Whether he has some sort of communication system he's not supposed to with his number two, I don't know. Well, they've got a running track here, so the bench actually would be the safest place for him because he'd be far enough away from the crowd, wherever he is in this crowd. Because, funnily enough, when the goal went in, a lot of the people just in front of us stood up and looked towards the left, towards the halfway line, where I expect he is. And uh, probably he's taken more verbal sitting up there as being banned from the touchline than he would certainly... Uh, looking from the bench and as you say he can't really try and change things and I'm sure he would have been pretty an animated at such a lacklustre first 45 minutes actually they they've run out quicker than they actually built up play from the back so perhaps they they have had a bit of a shake-up well both teams uh, swiftly out but I think they were called a little late because we're past the correct time for the kickoff to the second half just to see whether uh, any substitutions are made early by Olympiakos in particular. I can't imagine that uh, Liverpool will make any at this juncture. But the Liverpool substitutes, uh, for your information, the goalkeeper are Fexad, Ongsho, Rigobert Song, Steve Staunton, Smitsa, McAllister and young Richie Partridge, who's presumably being given uh, an opportunity to feel the atmosphere of what is rather more a European uh, tie than the previous two rounds of the UEFA Cup. I mean, they're in sort of touching distance of the Champions League here for the first time for a long time. Yeah, I think it's worth pointing out as well that there was not one corner kick in the first 45 minutes. Now, you know, as the home team, you'd, you'd have expected to put a, a bit of pressure on and, and get at least two or three corner, but not one corner kick. Well, I was wrong about Liverpool. The one change has been made, and it's Steve Staunton who was travelling 24 hours after the rest of the team to be in the squad here is taking over from Traore in the uh, left back position. Full start at the start of the second half. Didn't have a good half, it has to be said, the Frenchman. No, he dived in, he got a yellow card. I think that was the difference. It uh, looked like <laughs> they've decided to bring on somebody themselves as well, another Brazilian. Yes, that's Luciano. And he's come on instead of uh, Porcenitis, who uh, was at the centre of the uh, rather laboured style of attack in the central position. He who seemed to be thinking several thoughts and acting very slowly for much of the first period, and nearly always playing it out to the left to Djordjevic, who also didn't play well. Luciani should uh, certainly be 
a more forward uh, attacking midfield player. There's no point in having four or five at the back now. They've conceded the goal at home. They must get at least two. Now, looking at a tape when they played Lyon here, he played virtually behind the front player, uh, who on that occasion was the uh, Ghanaian who's on the injured list. Luciano's first move is to be caught offside. And Steve Staunton, uh, as I say, I think just to give that balance on the left hand side, Triori had, had got the yellow card, and if anyone looked as if they might run at defenders, uh, got to say it was Mavra Yanithis, the, the number 14 wide on the right. So Steve Staunton coming on and can try and hopefully keep a bit tighter to him so they actually doesn't receive ball with space. Well done by Contis, away from Heskey. Contis again, Bambi was in an offside position. The crowd complaining that the assistant referee didn't raise his flag, but Bambi clearly wasn't interfering with play and looked a little bemused at whether he got a knock, I don't know. Challenged by Steve Staunton, produces a free kick. Useful man to have around two if there's a free kick around the edge of the box. Mr. Staunton. Big opportunity for him, really, having been let out on loan and other players uh, competing for the left-back position. Christian Zieger is getting some attention to his injury in Germany. Vignal was uh, among the substitutes at Tottenham on Saturday and uh, Traore starting this contest. Covered by Hupia. Setterberg's first attempt to get his attack going. He certainly was the pick of the team in the first period. Amanatithis. Luciano, pretty deep. Djordjevic left. And uh, Giovanni went down. This is Djordjevic. Go kick. Giovanni just got up and it was Luciano then who had to go into the penalty having knocked it out wide. Natural left footer. Sometimes uh, they don't take the risk of playing. Giovanni and uh, Luciano together because uh, they're not the greatest tracking back, but now they need to score goals in this half, so they've got to take a chance. Djordjevic on an untimely slip, claiming he was foul, but I don't think he was. Staunton, Nephoropoulos watching it with care. This team incidentally have scored 22 goals this season in the Greek Championship. And maybe the best chance they had in the first half fell to Giovanni, but he failed to take the ball on the instep, but uh, he was cleanly in. Had he done so, he might have been watching a different game here. That's a Joglu. Talakis, met by Babel, Carragher, Husky down the right side, and uh, gets the free kick as Contis just took him out of the play without having too much concern for the ball. But very well again, Heskey down the channel, just toes it, he knows what's coming, Contis just charged into him, blocked him, gets a free kick, wasting time, just exactly what the striker should be doing. Very graceful fall too. Here's Heskey. And just got the challenge in, did Anatolakis. A good quick free kick from Danny Murphy. Saw Impiakos' defence gone to sleep. And again, the little rumbles of discontent in the home fans. Of their side haven't started that much better in the second half. And we're in the fifth minute of the second half. And this is the first corner of the match. Steve Staunton to curl it in. And the referee wants to sort out a little squabble on the goal line. He is big enough to sort out any squabble as well, isn't he, that referee? Hoopier 
in front of the goalkeeper, which is perfectly legitimate. Goodness me, how close that was. Heskey again. It just got too good a contact on it, just needs to be glanced. Uh, clears the near post man. Probably just getting a little nudge in the back and, and can't divert it on goal. Just needed to get the faintest of glances. Positive opening from Liverpool in the second half. Heskey shrugs off Djordjevic and Bambi! Oh, off the underside of the crossbar. And the goal kick is the final outcome. It looked as though Liverpool then had time to score twice, if you see what I mean. Well, Nicky Bambi, I think, he should have scored. Terrific play by Heskey. I mean, he bulldozed his way through that right-hand side, whipped it across, Owen went into the middle, and here Nicky Barbie's waiting for it to come down. Hit the underside of the crossbar. There's no Russian linesman. Mind you, it wasn't behind the line. And you can see clearly outside. Should have scored. If we'd have been a second goal, I think the game would have wrapped up. The crowd would have really got unsettled. So an escape for the home team. We might have had a clear view to our left, Trevor. I think most of these people would have gone. I wouldn't like to be the manager sitting up in the stand anyway. Got to say, well done to Emil Heskey, though. He made that out. Nothing. It was a ball knocked into the channel. He, he turned one player and then bulldozed his way by Djordjevic and, and a great early cross. Well up, Hoopia. Don't think we can say quite so well done to the uh, local cameraman on the slow motion. Took a bit of time to catch up with the ball. I apologise for that. He was slow motion himself, wasn't he? Djordjevic. Westerveld pushes a little bit on the six seconds, it seems to me, but he's put the ball down now, so there's no hurry anymore. Heskey again. I don't know whether to challenge him, to stand off him, or what to do with him at the moment. That time they just said, let's abandon ship and let him get the header, and then it's a case of trying to pick up Owen and Barbie is coming from wide, but uh, Emil Heskey again continuing his excellent form. Produced nine goals in the last eight games, including the hat trick at Derby. Good, good. Referee saw no foul then. Gerard. Djordjevic. Cuts a Joglu limping around. He was caught on the heel. Comfortable for Carragher. Injured party was recovered. And it's Lakis. Contis. Amanatitis. Some campman in the Liverpool half. Giovanni wants it in the middle. Set the bag. Good foot in by Gerard. Djordjevic did well to collect that. Murphy. And the free kick given against Heskey. Anatolakis, who's no uh, longer a regular choice in the side, might wish this wasn't the match for which he'd been recalled. Certainly given a few pounds, I think, to Emma Heskey, who's backing into him and turning him very well. Looks at another substitution because certainly at the moment the home side for me haven't stepped up any sort of pace or gear in the second half looking for the free kicks and uh, Swede's not noted for that but I think that was a bit one Manatitis that's a Zoglu Giovanni player pretty quickly. Number seven, I think, Yanakopoulos. Yes, it was Yanakopoulos. 
His usual role is to come on for second half substitute. This might be the man who departs, I don't know. But not done anything up to now. Just a minute or so ago, Alessandro seemed as if he might have got in between the two, but he's, he's not got any change of pace or anything. Titis expected his goalkeeper to come for that, and he was justified in that expectation, in my opinion. Just now getting a dirty look from Nelephoropoulos. As we look at Nelephoropoulos. Fifth season for Olympiakos, the substitute. Can't have not always taken to him because as a as a boy, indeed as a junior, he was a supporter of Panathinaikos, the great rivals. Olympiakos said to be the team of the workers, the shipyard workers, whereas Panathinaikos more the aristocrats compared with the artisans. A bit simplistic, but that's the story. Bubble. Great rivals will be one or two supporters of Panathinaikos who won't be too disappointed about this score at the moment. Zoglu, that's a useful ball, and Carragher did well. It was over his head, Giovanni was in on an angled run. Bambi, Staunton. Holds it up for Bambi, plays it beautifully for Bambi. Good challenge. Came from Mavro Yanitis. And it's going to be uh, Djordjevic who's withdrawn and the crowd do not like that. They're all turning to the coach who's sitting in the stand just to our left. I've now spotted him through the crowd. <laughs> it looks of the re I don't know if it's a reaction of the crowd, he's, he's having a quick change of thought there. This is quite funny, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Mavro Yanithis is now the choice. Crowd aren't too pleased with that. I wonder if this changed his mind again. Phone a friend. Of well, I would think that uh, the commentators' union will be rather more pleased with that. Substitution as well. Djordjevic slightly easier to say. And the Faropoulos collects. It's Luciano. Djordjevic. I don't think Hoop here intended that. Neither did Babel intend that. That could easily have been a costly error, couldn't it? A ricochet could have gone right into the path of the striker. Mustn't laps, make lapses like that. Here's Heskey. Crowd standing up, not to look at the football, but to complain to the coach. Well, that's a little disappointing. From Gerard, looked up and still overhit it by a country mile. Luciano, Djordjevic. Oh, match not lacking in atmosphere. Not much of it to do with what's being played on the pitch. <laughs> I think it's the coaches getting those chants, not the team. Here's Giovanni. And he caught the ball, so it's handball. He thought he was pushed and going to get a free kick. Might well have been offside anyway. Now the flag did go up. They've done very well on the offsides. There's not been much in it. Just a half a yard, a yard each time. They've got it right spot on. Heskey. Offside, Owen, who scuffed the shot anyway. A bit surprised at that. I'm not sure when they played the one-two whether he was offside when the ball was played. Let's have a look. Knocked it in there when it's played back, and that's not offside. Well, I just said they've done everything spot on, and then they go and let me down. Offside at the other end against Alexandris. Firecrackers, ticker tape, but all in frustration and irritation, and most of the latter aimed at one man, poor fellow. 
team is at the top of the league, but they've fallen out of the Champions League and they're losing in the UEFA Cup. And uh, Yanis Matsurakis must feel his position is under considerable threat. Djordjevic. Sold that dummy quite nicely. And the free kick is given for the foul on Djordjevic. And Babel will be a third Liverpool name to go into the referee's book. Looks scruffy with his socks like that, doesn't he? I, I think he must have a little shin pads below that, but he does leave half his shin bone exposed jogging around like that. Setterberg has placed it, Luciano takes it, and it's a goal kick. Not the best moment for the Liverpool defence. Well, it's a diagonal ball in, and uh, whether once he headed it, whether they would have allowed that, because naturally somebody had run into an offside position, but he, he was unmarked, the initial header there. That's a jog loop. And the uh, deputy coach put his head in his hands, made contact. Well, plenty of noise in the stadium, might be lifted the players, but important five or ten minutes there, Liverpool. Keep your concentration, don't give them an opening. There was a bit of sloppy marking, wasn't it, on that free kick? And here's Luciano, free kick taken quickly again. And not much has got past... Uh, down this right side. Jamie Carragher across again. Third corner of the match. Players arriving late. It will be a fourth corner. Old-fashioned floodlights here. Four pylons in the corner. This is really an open bowl stadium. And it's not the easiest. Because the light tends to be really focused and a little difficult to see clearly through. It's well up by Heskey. Did well defensively, didn't it? Because cross is actually where Liverpool have struggled, surprisingly, quite often this season, but Heskey won a great header there. Free kick to Liverpool. I would think that Messrs Hansen and Lawrence will see this is quite like old times in terms of the atmosphere. Liverpool not as famed as they were in their day. But certainly their presence and the fact that they're holding the home club, making them not the most popular. Deeply down, Staunton with a low cross. Just gave that away, Steve Staunton, but he's done pretty well since coming on. He's given them good shape, got forward whenever, and, of course, the number 14, Mervyn who, who was doing quite well in the first half, actually uh, has disappeared now, hasn't he? Been substituted. Setterberg, Giovanni... Luciano's added a little bit of pace to the uh, home side, I think. Giovanni rode two challenges as well. Gets in a useful cross, and that is a brilliant goal. And it's scored by Alexandris. Beautiful overhead, but Giovanni played the greatest part in that. Well, that was a great goal, we said it in that pace, but that was a great overhead, but it's another cross. I mean, there's plenty of bodies in there. Where is Babel? Babel, in fact, is right next to him. He gets between Babel, overhead, no challenge. It's a, it's a decent enough cross, but, you know, I just think somebody should make the challenge. Certainly, Carragher was the nearest in the end, but he's got between Babel. Excellent technique, and now suddenly... The ground's erupted, and it's back to the wall. 
And it's Michael Owen who leaves the field to be replaced by uh, Vladimir Smitsa. 1-1. One, one. And uh, Liverpool supporters might feel that it's something of the story of the season. One attacker getting between uh, two defenders, but all credit to uh, Alexander Eason's spectacular goal. No, it's good technique. It's, uh, yeah, the finish was very, very good, but he shouldn't get that space. Somebody should have gone to meet the ball. Here's Heskey. Corner. taking their time Barnby going across eventually but this has now become the test long awaited and Michael Owen will be very disappointed that he's not part of that test and it didn't last too long the lead beautifully done by Steve Gerrard looping head up past the goalkeeper Liverpool lead 2-1, the advantage that uh, they thought they clawed back, Olympiacos to square it at 1-1. And they go behind again, and the goalkeeper, seeing it very late, right across his face. Well, well done, Steve Gerrard, excellent header, glancing header. No one on the post where they could have cupped the defender, no one at the near or the far post. He's got in front of his two defenders, groping left hand. Good cross, curling cross, <laughs> delighted bench there from Nicky Barnby, but don't forget also Emil Heskey, who out wide actually won the corner kick, and another reflection on his impact, which is grown and grown for the club. Heskey on again, chase for Smitsa. She very nearly won. Leferopoulos is not the quickest off his line, or he doesn't make his decision quickly. takes about as long to get off his line as I do to say his name, that Ella Ferropoulos. Oh, what a reply by Liverpool just when they were being tested. So vital, wasn't it? Because your five minutes then of being level, the crowd would have started to sort of really get behind the side and suddenly it's gone quiet again. And they're complaining again, but not that lot. That's the Liverpool supporters up in the high tier away to our left. 500 have made the trip seen a little bit of the sun although not that warm in November certainly has gone quiet the firecrackers have been put away there's had to be a free kick surely by Schweitzer. just as the corner was being taken by that second well we had a, a look at Michael Owen it's, it's certainly still working his way to fitness and you could see he's not got that quite confidence or belief just yet he's certainly not got the zip in his play and he's just got to get matches up underneath him and get some of that confidence of a, a year or so ago back uh, it's particularly clear Trevor as you said at the time but uh, if you weren't watching on BBC 2 you would have uh, missed it and that was the run that he had right at the end of the first half where he was running wide and for a moment we were back at St Etienne this time he didn't have the pace and was jockeyed away to, towards the corner flag. Here's Nicky Bambi. Speaks are in the middle with Heskey. Hoop here. And Liverpool having taken the sting out of the evening with the second goal. Now just taking their time and it's gone very quiet in the Olympic Stadium. Free kick. Push on Amanatitis. The Smicha who can play sort of out wide either side in midfield has just replaced Mike Lowen sort of through the middle more this time and uh, he did a decent enough job when he played up there at Ellen Road I thought and possibly might be his best position oh, I remember his outstanding performance 
in an outstanding performance by the Czech team against the French in Euro 2000 when he looked the sort of player that Liverpool bought and haven't seen often enough. On by the sweet. Giovanni looking for the cross. Luciano, his Brazilian colleague, still in possession. He's the Brazilian spinning top, isn't it? You can see those little pirouettes and a five-a-side player, I'd call it. Off the pass, but Murphy did well, and here's Heskey. Needed two to take him, and Zalakis in the end. Koglu on by Giovanni. Djordjevic. Just has looked a bit short this evening, which is surprising because he's a good player. And another substitution to be made. Well, Ge Georgia Mitch Mark too, isn't it coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, Setterberg who goes off to be replaced by uh, Jörg Jartots. Uh, who they say hasn't found his form having spent a year away at uh, Inter Milan. He and Djordjevic looked a useful combination down the left side in that match uh, against Lyon here. Djordjevic! Well, he came back onto his right side looking for the curler. And the more natural tendency might have been to go the other way. But not too much has gone right for him this evening, Trevor. No, he does look a bit laboured. Uh, he's only 28, actually, isn't it? So he shouldn't be slowing down quite as much as that. Who am I to talk about pace? But he certainly, the cross, I thought, I was surprised there was so much room on the edge of the penalty area because there was two or three of them lining up. Eventually, they worked it to Djordjevic. He shaped it with his left, coming in on his right, and seemed to get two, two minds whether to drive it or clip it and didn't do either. But, uh, again, I'm still a little bit concerned that a little bit of lethargy in that Liverpool defence against better side than Olympiacos they, they could have got punished a conceding the goal and then even that little opening there Hoopia. Harman little pull Zoglu takes looks for you know who the free kick is given for the challenge John Heskey Followed by Contis just on the edge of the box not a popular decision almost inside wasn't it if he'd given it I, I think he was quite a long way away and decided it was outside whatever and but again Heskey winning an important area and a referee got to say hasn't been influenced at all by the home crowd and has, I think, been excellent. Steve Staunton to take. Five on the far side, looking for a bit of space. Gerard among them, Babel among them. Two-man wall. Oh! And off the woodwork. And the two-man wall not good enough. It did invite Steve Staunton to see whether he could manage it. And he jolly nearly did. Well, it's great free kick. He's, he's got a couple of long-range specialists. He's got one for the Republic of Ireland over that side of the, the penalty area with a free kick as well. But keeper wouldn't have got near it if the woodwork hadn't got in the way. He just got into the middle of the goal, showed the near post, and Steve Thornton said, thanks very much. Very unlucky. Barmby with the corner. Luciano. 
gets the return ball. And it's fouled by uh, Staunton. This is it. Look at the area in the near post. Nowhere near it. <laughs> Hit the angle. Would have been a goal, wouldn't it? The expressions on the faces of the two players on the wall. Interesting. Mark it, there might just as been a, might just as well have been a wall down on the harbour rather than the, on this football ground for all the use they were in stopping that. Well, totally committed, I think you could say. Westerveld. Does tempt the referee to uh, call him for time. The crowd seem to be getting wise to that too. Jatos. Line of four forward for Infiakos. Djordjevic on the left side, over the head of Carragher, who gets back solidly. And that's a pretty reasonable description of his performance throughout the evening. Giatos, Contis, by one by uh, Schmitze. Amanatitis. and management thought that ball would curl out and back in. It's definitely out now. <laughs> Referee smiles at them with a deal of indulgence in his expression. Asking to be clattered there, wasn't he? Uh, dragging the ball back right near the touchline there. Contis with a brave header. Luciano with no test in the end. Might have been for a more old-fashioned front player. Might have gone in after that, but uh, not Giovanni. Smitsa. And the free kick for a bit of holding on Heskey. And they've come on the length of the field from a good throw out. And if Heskey had been able to play it in, uh, Smitsa didn't have too much company. But a man of teeth is there just trying to target and get in front of Heskey. That, that is so physically strong. No, no one can nip in front of him. No defender can do it. And they, they just give fouls away. And, well, there's about seven or eight free kicks in these areas at either side of the pitch, which Emil Heskey has won just by his physical presence and power and being able to shield the ball. I'm going to place this. I've not seen too much of Yanakopoulos. He's uh, brought on to give a bit more life, the number seven there. Giovanni's not been noticeable through his work rate either. I'm not sure that he ever has. But he's a skillful player. Heskey. Good ball by Murphy to Bambi. Didn't quite get it as he wanted. Staunton made it better than it was. Smitsa was in an offside position. Play continues. Ten minutes left. Of this first leg, third round of the UEFA Cup. Liverpool lead 2-1 away from home. It's a 
situation pretty comfortable. European football likes to move forward into the new uh, year. Offside. Disappointment for Stelios Yanakopoulos. Again, good decision when the ball was played, definitely. Yeah, I'll be on the back line. As you say, Liverpool, what, a couple of weeks in the second leg, hopefully, again, at Enfield, no problems there, and then they can tuck that one away, and a nice one to look forward to in the new year, what, March. Offside given against Bambi. A few ironic cheers from the uh, home crowd. This might be an opportunity, too, for a, a few goals for Liverpool at, uh, at Anfield. Just to confirm the victory. Luciano. Just going to keep the concentration here, though. Take the advantage of a victory as well as two goals scored away from home. And Kopoulos wins a corner. Uh, as you say, let's make sure that no lapses. The stadium's quiet, a few home fans starting to stream away. Let's not give them something to shout about. Luciano taking, and Vestavel making a good catch. And throw out just a little bit too fast for Smitza. The trajectory and the pace on the wall. Actually, Smitza did well and sort of drew two of the three defenders, and I think it was uh, either Gerard and... Staunton on the left-hand side, who was the throw-out, he had 30, 40 yards of space, thanks to Smeetzer, so that was a wrong selection. Djordjevic. Luciano. Corner. Barnby working up and back. Heskey back in his box to defend. Giovanni makes the run on the near post. Chance of a breakaway here. One on one. Oh! And Smitza hits the foot of the post. Straight in on the goalkeeper. And he's unlucky, you have to say. Well, he's unlucky, but he should score. Should be game, set and match. Thought an awful long time. I thought he was going to just take it round him, but then he decided to place it. Just clips the, the keeper, takes it to the inside of the post. When you think the Steve Staunton won against the woodwork, Liverpool could already almost have one and a half feet in the next round. But as it is, 2-1. A sign of a little problem between two players and the referee wants to have a word to sort it out straight away Bambi and uh, Stelios in a couple of what about the defending for the to allow Smeetza I mean there's a straightforward headed clearance but underneath it back headed it and Smeetza clear and I think he thought he was so sure it was going to go in that he didn't follow up the rebound otherwise he could have done Oh, no way again. Heskey! Some of the heading is getting pretty bad, isn't it, at the moment? Emil Heskey was so shocked to get the ball, he could have got that on target. He almost offering Liverpool a third goal. Crowd now streaming away. Possibly wondering how their side won all the home matches in the Champions League because they really have not been the side that was anticipated. Heskey pulled back, but still going on. And still. And still. And this time, Eleparopoulos, who deserves some credit for getting a hand onto the uh, shot by Smitsa. That was it's a great run, trouble. this, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's gone past three. Then again with power. And, and it actually just seemed to hesitate, didn't he? If he'd have carried on in his stride and hit the shot, he warranted a goal, deserved a goal. Nothing 
Alexandris into uh, Petrjoglu offside. They look a pretty dispirited bunch, and uh, their expressions, believe me, are mirrored on the face of many spectators leaving. But on the face of spectators, there's also a little bit of anger. The side have, have played poorly, not given them the home fans value at all this evening. A 2-1 down could be four or five. And Liverpool just got to make sure that they... Well, there's another chance. The flag didn't go up. Streets has come on. Could have had a couple. He could have brought it down and had a cup of tea and then slotted it. I mean, he thought, naturally, that somebody was challenging him because he didn't have to hit it that early. But what you don't hope is Liverpool have made to pay for this chance is give away a sloppy second goal or something. Best of all, watch that with care. Just wonder what Michael Owen is thinking. If only those two chances had fallen to me, it would not have been a boost to his confidence if we just slotted them away. Told you with Smeets, who was very good through the middle, didn't I? I always rely on your judgment, Trevor. <laughs> Learned a lot down the years. Can't always be right. Staunton. Bambi. Smeets! Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'd like to say it was dipping, but it wasn't, was it? That was unbelievable, miss. <laughs> what is that in, is in his... check? I don't know. <laughs> it's a dud, I tell you. <laughs> is, his, is his face a bit red? I would think it is. He got right underneath it. Heskey. And again, Heskey. Murphy. Liverpool toying with the opposition at the end. Could have had the proverbial hat for. And the home crowd chanting to Liverpool passes and uh, attempts. A few Olays there, where did that come from here in Athens? But uh, uh, they've just been queuing up for chances, haven't they, Liverpool? How that, the scoreline is still only 2 1, I don't know. You can hardly say it's because. Uh, they're pushing forward the home side with great determination to save the day because that I'm afraid they're not doing. Why should I say I'm afraid? It's it's uh, good news for Liverpool. Free kick. And a couple of a little nod in there by Steve Gerrard sets Liverpool away again. And Smeets are through the middle again, but this time with no chance of making a connection. Ironic cheers, then they've got possession. I don't know where the coach for old Mr Matsurakis is, but he, he can't be feeling very happy with the display from the players. There's been a distinct lack of effort. That's that's the, the worrying factor, I think, if you're a home fan. They just don't look as if they, they've, they've bothered at this scoreline. They've been totally outplayed in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Where's their, where is their pride? Djordjevic. And I think the point that was made at half-time, that they've rather taken the attitude that they should still be in the Champions League and really shouldn't be playing in this competition. And just listen to the reaction and you can't be surprised. Giovanni. Didn't make sure, gets a second chance. Djordjevic. And Gary McAllister is going to get into the action as we move into the last minute. In fact, we're well into the last minute. Be a bit of stoppage time. And uh, Takis Limonis, we're looking at there with Gerard Houllier. Not much that the number two has been able to do. Well, three minutes, there will be time for McAllister to get on. Smita. Gerard. G. 
Janu. Arguably the best pass that Djordjevic has played all night. Two in the middle. Djordjevic. Djordjatos took a little bit too long. Challenged by uh, Ip Mahaman. And now the substitution will be made and Danny Murphy is the player to be replaced. Yeah, Danny Murphy's done his job on the right-hand side, used it uh, as an overlook complicated when he's got the ball to help keep possession. And I'm sure he'd be pleased, Gary McAllister scampering up, but uh, the outstanding player has to be Emil Heske, I think he's again continued in this superb form, being a terrific outlet from defenders or midfield players and, and helped relieve the pressure on so many occasions and, and helped Liverpool get to that 2-1 scoreline, even though he hasn't got on the score sheet himself. Flick on. Oh, and finally. He gets his second goal, Alexandris, to make it 2 2, which is rather sour the Liverpool performance, and suddenly Jeers turned to cheers. But a poor goal from Liverpool's point of view. Both the two conceded could be so described. Well, I, I just said it could come back to Horn, and that is a straightforward hanging cross. Babel goes for it, he doesn't get there. Jamie Carragher gets the wrong side, doesn't it? He anticipates the first header. Look, he creeps inside, it clears him. It's a little toe ender, a dribbler into the corner. I mean, how on earth are Liverpool drawing this game? It's, it is just sums up. Look, there's three against two. Missed the first header and the little toe under on the second. I mean, you've got to give Alexander his credit, he's got two goals. But how on earth are Olympiacos getting a draw from this? I do not know. Hammond. Uh, is, is there still something else to come? Back in front immediately. They were pulled back before. But really... The good news is it keeps our second leg alive, doesn't it? Anyway. Yeah, it does indeed. It's all very well having two away goals. Only count in the result of the score being a draw. But it's a disappointment, really, after, you know, you're just thinking, well, it's been a good night for Liverpool. There hasn't been the threat that they anticipated. They've dealt with things well. They came back well after the first equaliser. And they could have had a hatful. And in the end, they haven't even got a victory. It's two crosses, but how often have we been speaking about they just can't deal with crosses this year? 2-2 two, two is the final score, which, for those of us who watch the match, will find difficult to believe, because it should have probably been 5 or 6-1. But there are two away goals, and at the start of the evening, Liverpool would have settled for that.